Even before their annual Build conference kicked off, Microsoft was already generating chatter on AI Twitter with the launch of their new AI PCs. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the AI headlines you need in around five minutes. Today, we are focusing on the first set of announcements from Microsoft Build. Yesterday, we did a little bit of a preview around what I was looking for at Microsoft Build. It included things like how much they were going to lead with hardware versus software, how much they were going to continue to tout their open AI relationship versus give us some indication that they were moving away or at least hedging, and a couple of other questions like that. Well, even before the event technically began, because I believe as they've got it listed, today is the first day technically, they kicked off with a bang showing off their new Copilot Plus PCs. As anticipated, we got a new wave of AI-powered PCs with some pretty big claims. Microsoft says that their new line is significantly faster than the M3 MacBook Air, owing to the new Snapdragon Elite X chips from Qualcomm. Still, the emphasis wasn't really so much on the hardware, it was what the whole package of the hardware enabled. And at the very center of that was a new desktop assistant that was basically the Windows-integrated version of what we got from OpenAI last week. In fact, one of the comments that I saw from some people is now we know why ChatGPT didn't launch a desktop app, because Microsoft just made the thing native to Windows. Mustafa Suleiman, formerly the head of Inflection, now the head of Microsoft AI, tweeted yesterday, we are taking Copilot to the next level. Copilot will see, hear, speak, and help in real time. Soon your AI companion will start to live life alongside you, whether playing Minecraft or helping you navigate life's most difficult challenges. Let's take a quick look at this demo to get a sense of what's going on here. Hey, Copilot, how's it going? Hey, it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. You've got some sticks. Perfect for the sword's handle, but it looks like you're missing the material for the blade. Let's start by gathering some wood or stone. Shall we head out and find some resources? Yeah, that sounds great. So what you're seeing here is Copilot actually being able to see the screen that the user is interacting with on more than just a superficial level, right? In this case, it's able to actually see what's in the player's Minecraft inventory and make suggestions on that basis. Although it's a different context, in this case gaming, it's very similar to the type of interaction that we saw OpenAI show off last week, as well as Google with Project Astra. And you take those things together and it's pretty clear that we're moving to a world where our interactions with computers may be mediated or maybe all shared with this omnipresent assistant that can help us on any given tasks. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting about the choice they made to show a game scenario is that when it comes to the utility or use cases of this type of feature, I can see there being a bit of an intimidation gap. Are people, for example, really going to ask their perpetual omnipresent assistant to read their writing and give them suggestions? Maybe not, but getting stuck in a game, which is a very common experience, and having the assistant help walk them through how to get out of being stuck in that game, seems like it could be the type of first step use case that gets a lot of people to get familiar with this mode of interaction. Still, probably the most discussed feature from yesterday's announcement was called Recall. For those of you who are familiar with what used to be called Rewind.ai, that has now also launched Limitless, Recall is basically the same feature. It keeps track of everything that you're doing so you can use natural language to go back and recall exactly what you've done. As Tsar Nick sums up, Satya Nadella says Windows PCs will have a photographic memory feature called Recall that will remember and understand everything you do on your computer by taking constant screenshots. Let's watch this little video about this feature that was also released yesterday. How do we introduce memory, right? Photographic memory into what you do on the PC, and now we have it. So it's called recall. It's not keyword search, right? It's semantic search over all your history. And it's not just about any document. We can recreate moments from the past, essentially. Here's how it works. Windows constantly takes screenshots of what's on your screen, then uses a generative AI model right on the device, along with the NPU, to process all that data and make it searchable, even photos. I got to try it out. I searched brown leather bag. It came up in visual search. There's no place on this page that it says brown leather bag. It just knows because it sees this brown leather bag. There could be this reaction from some people that this is pretty creepy. Microsoft is taking screenshots of everything I do. Yeah, I mean, that's why that you can only do it on the edge, right? So this is like, you know, you, can't, you have to put two things together. This is my computer. This is my recall. Uh, and it's all being done locally. So a couple things here. On the one hand, this is the type of feature that will be extremely useful to many people in many contexts. Searchable memory across everything that you've done is just a potential productivity hack. 
at the same time, as this interview host points out, the potential for abuse here is also extreme. Now, Microsoft's answer to this, which is exactly what Apple has been working on as well, is that this is AI that doesn't touch the cloud. That's what he's referring to when he says the edge. He means that it's only happening locally and is not being stored or shared with the cloud. The challenge, of course, for many people is that that requires a lot of trust. And indeed, there are about 30 million views of this video, and the responses are basically a Rorschach test for how people feel about issues of privacy, surveillance, big tech, you name it. Kevin Beaumont points out the financial risk. He says from Microsoft's own FAQ, note that recall does not perform content moderation. It will not hide information such as passwords or financial account numbers. Abiba Burhain, who does AI accountability at Mozilla, says, this is called constant surveillance, monitoring and tracking, and it will eventually be used to influence and control the masses. Karthik Sankaran says lawyers predict a new golden age of discovery. Elon weighed in as well, saying this is a Black Mirror episode, definitely turning this quote-unquote feature off. In what I find to be a deeply resonant tweet based on the history of new features that people complained about, Matthew Pines writes, You will complain and post and then passively accept it as the new normal. The ratchet of persistent and pervasive surveillance is required for AI to reach its full total addressable market. What we have here is in a single feature, an embodiment of so many of the upsides and downsides of AI and new technology in general all in one. It's something that could be extremely useful, but that also pushes the boundaries of what people are comfortable with. It's something that people can't imagine right now, but in the future may not imagine living without. It's something that requires a huge amount of trust from big tech companies that don't exactly have a lot of our trust right now. Basically, in short, it is going to be fascinating to see how this actually plays out as they roll these features out. And so I'm going to be watching that closely. Now, Microsoft Build is still just getting started, so I'm sure we are going to have more to talk about this week. But for now, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Stick around for the main episode. 